course I thought I'd be there in no time. Easy passage, ticking off the miles. Tailwinds every day, sun on my back. There I was, standing on top of the highest mountain in the land looking west. 2,000 river miles from the ocean and already smelling the salt air on the breeze. But of course, the most important journeys never go to plan. G'day, I'm Brian Watcho. I'm a paddler, writer, outdoor guide and educator. And this is The River Dreams, a series about a canoe descent of the River Murray in Australia. A journey of discovery into what rivers mean to us, how we experience these living landscapes, and what we might need to do to save them. I paddled four different river craft at the end of Australia's harshest drought, down the length of Australia's greatest river, the Murray. But it's only now, years later, that I'm coming to grips with that journey, as experience, memory, knowledge, family history become increasingly entangled. I was alone in a canoe I built with my grandfather's tools, block plane, spoke shaves, chisel and mallet from Kosciuszko to the tall wharves at the inland port of Ichuka, with its music of steamboat whistles and its echo of colonial commerce. Alone again in a K1 racing kayak, with barely the clothes on my back. I paddled far out onto the ancient floodplain in a craft so tippy that it was like balancing on a knife blade to see what I could learn in the school of hardship. Then paddling again from Lock 15 with my 15-year-old daughter Bess, who I had pulled away from the rows of school desks for a precious month. 600 miles of dawn starts, killing heat, campfire yarns and songs, going to movies in the big river towns where the air conditioning was always on, and where our shopping bags always bulged with plump riverland oranges. Then back on the river, paddling through lightning storms, a red gum forest on fire, chasing weather reports downstream from locals who knew that you don't move from the shade after midday. Riverbend after riverbend, all slowly bringing us back to the old farm, where we rested and listened to stories about the old times. And then, one last time, skipping across the surface like a pebble, where the lower river runs beneath the limestone cliffs past bulrushes rubbing against each other in the rising wind and across the dangerous lake named for a princess who would become a queen and change her name to Victoria but the cartographer's ink was already dry on the map how exotic that name Alexandrina sounds now alongside Kurong, place of the narrow neck a name from the old language which rings in the ear like a wise bird calling me to fall asleep in the sand dunes. Drifting off to the longed for beat of the sea, dreaming about the boy in the storm. And then, at dawn, that last morning, one last fire on the beach, boiling the billy like all those times before, except that this was the last time. Then once more to pick up the paddle with calloused hands, dip it into the water again, reach and twist and pull again, all in the hope of finally coming home to the sea. Some say I'm too wild Some say I'm too tame Sometimes I'm a smile Sometimes I'm the If you come down river, you'll hear poems scribbled on scraps of paper while drifting in the canoe, stories written in the journal by firelight while camping on the river's banks, about explorers, paddleboat skippers, woodcutters, drovers, encounters with boozed-up weekend warriors on their jet skis, dam builders and irrigators who want to tame the river, and from my ancestors, who settled on its banks in South Australia generations ago. When the watchos cleared the 
block in Wakeree, they stack the wood by the river at Watcho's Landing. And steamboat skippers would call in and buy loads of wood. And that's how the Watchos began to get established. Clear the land, cut the wood, sell the wood, start farming. Hard work, but that's part of the story of the river. I guess that's one of the reasons why I feel so drawn back to the river. There's both the river itself, which is magnificent, and its great ecology of bends and meanders and flow and wildlife and billabongs and floodplain. And then there's the human story. The thousands of years. And part of that story is part of the Watcho story. And that's part of what I hope to capture in this series, along with my own journey with the river. The Murray is so many things to so many people. It can seem beautiful one day and wounded the next, vital to the national economy, but a place of division and conquest. And it's a landscape we have trashed. Cattle and sheep graze the river flats and erode its banks. I've seen more feral goats than kangaroos drinking from the edge of the river. European carp displace Murray cod. English willows push red gums away from the water. Blue-green algae, salinity and black water events impact the river's health. To paddle slowly down the river is to live in a landscape of loss. But living with the river so closely for so many weeks, I came to see it as a great ribbon of life. A breathing, speaking, resilient landscape fighting for its survival. There'll be time to put down the paddle and pen and rest. And become immersed in the great soundscape of the river. To simply be with the river and listen to its great song. Yes, there is history, ecology, politics, even philosophy to account for on the river. But mainly, this is the story of what one person saw, heard and felt, while paddling and living on the river for 70 days. But for now, I sit quietly and begin to fall back into those memories, to drift again in that slow flowing current and to go only where the river goes. This is the River Dreams, and in episode two, we begin the journey in the snowy mountains, the headwaters of Australia's greatest river. Some say I'm too wild, some say I'm too tame. Sometimes I'm a smile, sometimes I'm the rain. I'm carrying these secrets Kept them locked down low But I need you to hear them So I can let